Hello everyone, I'm Kevin Potter. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I want to take a moment to talk to you today about a story I came across um, soon after Christmas and not to mention this will be the last episode of 2014 you'll ever see. As, as you may have guessed, New Year's Day is on January 1st, 2015. So I just want to wish everyone a happy new year before I uh, talk about the story that I'm going to bring to your attention today. Um, this lady wanted to buy her boyfriend a PS4. Now, hear me out on this. Instead of getting the gift, he got two Bibles. Which kind of leads me to one question. Did the person who committed the crime wanted to go to church? Or did he want to send the customer to church in order to get his PS4? What kind of person does that? Well, the good news is the customer who had that happen to him, they got their money back. Or, better yet, they got a new PS4. They did decide to go to church, but not because of what happened to them. But it's not just Christmas that's being ruined. You know, in Abilene, Texas, where I'm from, the roads got icy on New Year's Eve, which some people wanted to have a New Year's Eve party, and some of it was canceled. But the one thing that can never be canceled is the television version of the New Year's Eve shows. That was the only thing that couldn't be canceled, because you can watch it on TV. Over 100 wrecks were reported so far, where I'm from. Now, in spite of it all, I will say this. When I went to work today, I didn't use the bike at all. And it's a good thing I didn't. Because bikes aren't meant to ride me with them like that anyways. Now, something else I want to talk to you about today as well the one thing I want to talk to you about the, mo about the most is Facebook you see some people will receive a Facebook friend request from someone they supposedly knew which means that if they know someone they'll go ahead and accept it right well what if I told you that it may not be who they really are. A similar thing happened to a friend of mine who supposedly sent me a Facebook friend request, but it turned out it wasn't him. And I caught on to it. And I did the right thing and made sure it didn't happen again by bringing it to his attention. As well as one local radio station DJ, JB Cloud, he too had that happen to him as well. And I brought it to his attention and said, look, your Facebook friends with a fake account pretending to be someone I know deleted immediately and he did just that. He did the right thing on his part and I thank him for that. The account was taken down. But that was a while back though. That was before I started working at Sears to begin with. But the main reason why I brought that up is because in Piedmont, in Piedmont North Carolina she said she was almost a victim of a $2,000 scam on Facebook. Now, this type of added as friend scam was a little different because A person she supposedly knew stated that all she had to do was send a friend send a friend request to a man she never met who was supposed to let her know how to get a catch prize. She should have ignored 
that request anyways. Because the guy asked for personal information where she lived, whether she was married, and then asked him to send him two thousand dollars to pay the price. Here's the problem. That's called a Facebook lottery scam. Thank goodness what happened to my friend was not a lottery scam, but I caught it before it happened. Because it could have been worse, but the truth is, you didn't win the lottery by joining Facebook. And you'll never have to send money via a wire transfer, or more specifically, a green dot card to um, claim your prize. That's not how it works. So if they say you won the lottery, don't listen to them. Just hang up the phone. And speaking of scams, a lot of jury duty scams have happened in the last six months. Most of them said that you have a warrant out for your arrest for not showing up for jury duty. And then they threaten to arrest you if you don't pay the fine. Problem is, that's fake. If they were to arrest you, they'd show up to your house or business and do it in person instead of going about it off with the telephone. So that oh, that's obviously a scam. That's obviously a scam. Don't fall for that. If you really had a warrant out for your arrest, they would have told you personally. That they wouldn't do that on the phone, anyways. Don't fall for those. And last but not least, there's one more scam I want to bring to your attention as well. Um, some families have had what's called a grandparent scam, or another scam that's similar to this. But generally speaking, it's where you get a call saying that your son or daughter, or your grandson or daughter, or your uncle or your nephew, was kidnapped for ransom, supposedly, and then they want, like, say, like $5,000 or $10,000 or your dead person's going to be killed. Well, they prey on your emotions. They want you to get upset. They want you to get scared for nothing. The problem is, it's a scam because if they ask you to acquire it, it's a scam. Rule number one. If you hear that someone you know has been kidnapped, call them to confirm it. That way, you can find out for certain if it was true or not before you do anything else. Some people I have learned that the hard way. I want to thank you for watching this show and have a happy, happy, have a happy New Year's Day.